welcome to Spectrum Sundays. I am Francesca D'Alessandro, a speech language pathologist in New York City, empowering my community through AND and awareness for neurodiversity. And I am Megan Sinisi, Miss Pennsylvania 2021, a speech language pathologist and the founder of a nonprofit organization for autism titled From a New Perspective. Everyone deserves to feel accepted and included in every space they walk in. Our series aims to inspire you to advocate for yourself and on behalf of your loved ones. And we are so grateful that you're here with us today. Christine Vasui earned a bachelor's degree in individualized studies focusing on social work. She worked as an independent living specialist for two and a half years, helping individuals with various disabilities set goals and reach their highest potential. She has cerebral palsy and has been living together with her fiance for the last five years, who also has cerebral palsy. Christine is an advocate for the disability community as an ambassador for Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania, which is an organization that empowers women in wheelchairs to educate, advocate, and promote change in the disability community. Her focus is to fight for better pay for personal care attendants. She believes that even with a disability, anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Christine is also the pro in the process of owning a Habitat for Humanity house. So Christine, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And we're really excited to get to know you and more of your mission. Thank you for having me, I'm excited. We are just as excited. So before we really dive into our conversation today, we always like to start our discussions by asking our guests about preferences with identity labels. So we know that there's person first language, which will be saying person with a disability. And then there's also identity first language, which is saying disabled person. If you feel comfortable, could you share what your preference would be as we continue? Um, well, for a lot of the disability community and a lot of myself, I prefer person first language. Awesome, and thank you for sharing that with us. I also wanted to follow up with, um, there's some conversation about whether it's preferred to say wheelchair user, person that uses a wheelchair. What's your preference with that as well? I would say, person that uses the wheelchair. Okay, I think that I've heard some conversation about um, the terminology of handicapped or wheelchair bound. So that kind of helps us open up that conversation and think about I've heard both, but I myself prefer person uses the wheelchair. And I think what I've heard from that and actually a Miss Pennsylvania wheelchair uh, candidate before as well said that whenever someone is wheelchair bound that makes it sound like there's because you don't want to um you don't want to make my wheelchair is not my identity it is how I'm independent it, but it's not my voice and it's not who I am okay. yes I am in a wheelchair it's part of who I am, but it's not the whole. We mentioned before that you have cerebral palsy. And for Megan and I, we're speech language pathologists. So we're very familiar with that term and we've experienced working with people who have cerebral palsy. But for most people, they might have never met someone who has CP. So how would you describe it in your own words? And could you clarify a misconception that is out there about cerebral palsy or CP? Um. For me, cerebral palsy is a neurological disorder that causes um, muscle impairment due to brain damage. There's many varieties of it. There's individuals who only one side is affected. There's individuals who um, both upper and lower uh, is affected, and there's individuals who also have cognitive impairments as well. I have spastic cerebral palsy, and both my legs and arms are affected. I use a 
will show the majority of the time I have a little more upper body strength than lower body strength. Um, a misconception that I think at least I receive a lot is that I'm intellectually disabled. Um, I will have people talk to me or talk to whoever I'm with rather than talk to me. And I'd be like, um, I can understand you or you can ask me the question. Another misconception I have is um, I'm engaged. And when I tell people I'm engaged, they look at me like they've never seen anybody engaged before. So it's like, I think people who are not familiar with disabilities think that we're not like successful or capable of being a part of society. Right. And it really poses a lot of unfair assumptions for people with disabilities. And I'm glad that you mentioned about how CP kind of exists on a spectrum similar to autism spectrum disorders. There's no, I, I can have a CP and the person next to me can have a CP. And some people you can't even tell, they might just have a little, um, like swag to the walk or something. I don't know what the word is they use, but other times, so it's a very wide variety of what CP can be. Exactly, yeah, so it definitely presents very differently in each person, um, but what you said about those assumptions, that really helps us understand moving forward as advocates and hopefully anybody listening to go in with a more open mind when interacting with people with disabilities um, and, and never to make those, we always say, um, presume competence, right? And to always have a conversation with a person first. And then, you know, if they require an interpreter, then utilize that as a tool. Even if it takes, because um, I know for me when I'm in pain or something, it takes me a little bit longer to get my world out or it, it Sometimes I have to repeat my words. So just take the five seconds it's going to take. A, I'd rather you ask me to repeat than assume, or, oh, I don't want to listen, or I don't know what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure that that can be really frustrating as well. So, you know, that's why we enjoy Spectrum Sunday so much so that we can have these discussions and hopefully open people's minds. So another aspect of your being is being a title holder or, you know, vying for someday the title of Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania. Right now you serve as an ambassador. So could you share more about this organization and what you've accomplished as an ambassador? Um, the most Wheelchair Pennsylvania organization empowers women to be stronger advocates and uh, set their goals for change. Each woman, each woman picks a platform that they want to focus on. Some people have focused on like body image. Some people have focused on parenting with a disability. Um, my focus is higher wages for personal care attendants, which are the individuals who come in to your home or wherever you're at to assist us with our daily needs, because I cannot get in and out of bed myself and I cannot um, do my daily like showers. Um, so I'm fighting for higher wages for them because right now they only, it could be anywhere from, on average, it's 
911 dollars an hour. So I, which is causing a shortage of personal care attendants, maybe us people who need the services at leaving us kind of stuck and without care. But we also focus on like other advocacy things and workshops every month to just strengthen our abilities to bring awareness to different issues and do things like what I am today being on Spectrum Sunday and um, bringing more awareness about people with disabilities. Well, I'm really glad that what you're advocating for can really help others out there as well. I see too in my own job, I meet a lot of aides, personal care assistants who uh, work more than one job just to make ends meet. And so that they go to their employment, they're exhausted. And it's not that they don't care, but they're just so fatigued from working so many hours and managing so many different needs. Uh, and the job can, the job can be physical because I need put in bed, taken out of bed. So it's, it's a lot, not to say there's not any downtime, but they have their own families to take care of. And because they're such a shortage, um, people are like some of my care, personal care attendants will have to like do me and then, ha and then have to go between me and somebody else in my building because there's not enough attendants to cover um, all the people who need care. And that's because you can go to McDonald's and make like $16 an hour when we're stuck in, we're stuck in positions where we can't take care of ourselves. Right, so we need, you know, more professionals being able to support themselves while also being able to help those with disabilities. So we need to have those competitive wages so that people can sustain a better lifestyle. Yes, and I wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about what you do for a living. And I also want to tie that into something you mentioned earlier about how people don't always know that someone with a disability, specifically a CP could have a job or have a sustainable relationship that is working well because a lot of our communities might infantilize disability and not realize that there is a human behind the disability who wants to have a happy and successful life. And you lead by example and are in a very important role as an independent living specialist. So could you just explain some things about what you do in your job and why it's helpful? So I am in the part, I recently got laid off a couple months ago. So I am in the process of working for a new job. But as my time as an independent living specialist, I help people anywhere from helping someone who needed to learn like daily living, such as like how to balance a checkbook to um, how to apply for social security. I've, ha I've helped individuals who were not getting accommodations that they need at school. So I would go into the IEP meeting and be, and um, I would say this is why this person, this person needs this accommodation and we all need to come together to help the student with the success. Um, I've done a little bit of everything from different 
Yeah. And some people, I would just, I've had a couple people who recently became disabled from an accident. So sometimes I would have to talk to them and be like, yes, this happened to you, but that that's not who you are. And you just need to find your voice. And um, so I just help them want to speak up and want to be comfortable with themselves and teach people that it's okay to have a disability and that doesn't make you any less of a person. For me, it, having a disability gives me different outlook because I appreciate um, I appreciate the little things and honestly without my without having CP, I would have never um, became an ambassador with Miss Lucha, Pennsylvania. So I'm grateful. I'm not gonna say it's all easy, but. Absolutely. And we need a lot more advocates who are confident and courageous to stand up in those really difficult, difficult situations. And like you said, it's not easy. And especially as an advocate yourself, you're facing the barriers of misconception. So the fact alone that you can be involved with centers of independent living as number one example that people with disabilities can live independently and full, uh, lead fulfilling lives, that is a great first step in opening up people's minds and, and helping people realize more about it. So those centers for independent living, living and the independent living specialists like yourselves are extremely important for the future of those with disabilities. So I wanted to also ask you about something else that's really important in our world is that a lot of decisions that affect people with disabilities are made without their voices considered. So one example being infrastructure decisions are being made without accessibility of disabled people in mind or their voices being represented in those decision-making processes. So what are some resources in Pennsylvania or elsewhere that would support disabled indiv individuals in their everyday activities, such as transportation, avenues, um, finding accessible grocery stores or any other activities that you might be able to share that would be helpful? So it's a tough one. Um, I know, cause I know in infrastructure, like if I go to a restaurant and there's no handicap button, oh, I'm like, oh. but some resources that I found helpful, most counties or most areas have a, in my area, it's called the lift, where it's accessible transportation for people who need to go to doctor's appointments or need to just want to go to the mall. Um, so that's how, when I don't have someone to take me, that's how I get around. As far as helping with other resources, um, there's centers for independent living throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And I think there's 25. And if you're not sure like what, what resources there are, like if you, cause I know the one I used to work at, they had da daily activities, they had cooking class, they had fitness class, they had um, craft class. So there's many diff different, and they have them in almost every state. So it just depends on your area. As far as like accessible, like knowing which places are accessible, I honestly don't know of anything that will tell you like 
this grocery store is accessible, this store is accessible, which in today's society, I think that should be like an app that like, mm -hmm. that tells you information about a place. Cause I know I've been to places where I go into a doctor's appointment and it's like, oh, there's steps. Well, they didn't tell me that on the phone. So as far as knowing specific, there's not really any, anything that I know of that will specifically tell you that. No, I think that's great. And well, I'm in New York and more specifically, I spend most of my time in New York City. And I was so surprised by how inaccessible some of the basic things like education and like you said, doctor's appointments are. And we have something that's called Accessoride here in New York City, and it's fairly reliable. I've heard a lot of um, mixed reviews and I've heard it's gotten better. And then there's some smaller companies too. Uh, I believe Busani's mobility company, there's some smaller uh, startup companies who are trying to fill in some of the gaps. But like you said, even when you call to make appointments or go to the grocery store, you have to take that extra step and ask, do you have a wheelchair ramp? Is your Are your openings wide enough for my entire wheelchair and my aid to go through? Like you have to think of those extra things that yes. maybe not an, a typical community member has to. So you have to jump through these extra hoops. But I was just wondering also, what were some of those resources out there in Pennsylvania? Because I know it's a problem everywhere in the country. I think as far as the transportation, it's like, I don't know, what did you call yours? Uh, uh, exactly the ride, that's what it's called. So I think it's all the same concept. It just yeah. depends on where you're at. Exactly. Um, but I know there, because I know in Buffalo they have, because my boyfriend's from Buffalo, they have something oh, <laughs> similar to that. So, mm -hmm. yes, yes, I'm also from Buffalo. We'll have to connect more about that later. But that's, <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing more about that and some of the struggles that you face that not everyone gets to see and gets to hear about. But I want to, get into something a little bit more exciting, which is your Habitat for Humanity house. So first of all, how did you become involved? And how are you maintaining a role or what is your relationship with that organization still? Okay, so Habitat for Humanity is, helps people obtain housing that would normally not for or have a difficult time either qualifying for housing or finding a house that would be fit for the family. So we've been in the process for, for almost four, four years, um, but part of that is due to COVID. When you're when you have a disability, a physical disability, it can sometimes, because not everyone, but some people are on limited income. So before we got started with Habitat, um, we were on limited income and it was hard for us to get a house and especially a house that is fit for both of our needs. Because you, anywhere you buy a house, it's probably not going to be fit for what I need because of my physical limitations. It's probably not gonna be wide enough. So Habitat is in the ending process of building a completely accessible handy uh, and completely accessible house. It is one of the big misconceptions about Habitat is that it's a free house. It is not. We have um, 
we have budget classes that we take and they they like monitor um, the spending habits um we have to pay a mortgage it's no in no no taxes for 10 years and no interest but we do pay a mortgage but hopefully by the end of the summer it will be done because we've been in it for a really long time but i just hope it gives other people with disability disabilities like you can't you can't own a house you can get a job you just because of all limitations doesn't mean we can't do it uh, we just may have to go about it a different way. right well congratulations on that journey and being the person to blaze a trail and to make it more accessible for people in the future so now that it's been done once it could serve as a model for other people and inspiration as well it's been done it's been done but i i know for my area it's the first accessible house so that's exciting and i'm we're excited to see what the final outcome is yes well good luck to you that is very exciting and the more that those types of living situations or opportunities are seen as an option, the more other people will understand that as an option for them as well. So good luck to you on that. Um, but Thank you. Yes, of course. And Christine, as we kind of wrap up our conversation today, we've covered, it seems like everything under the sun between your passions, your advocacy work, some of your interests. What is one idea or message that you'd like our audience to remember from our discussion? disability or not don't let anything stop you um it might be difficult but there's always a way um never give up your and my struggles and challenges make me who i am today it does. So thank you so much for visiting with us on Spectrum Sundays, Christine. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to learn more about her, please follow her on Instagram and Facebook at Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania Ambassador. And we have the link to that Facebook page in our caption below. You can also subscribe to her YouTube channel called Rollin' with CP. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you next Sunday. Thank you for listening to Spectrum Sundays. We are your hosts, Francesca D'Alessandro and Miss Pennsylvania 2021, Megan Sinisi. Please make sure to subscribe to our series and follow us on social media to stay connected to neurodiverse professionals and self-advocates. And remember, true impact is accomplished through active listening and exploring the world through a variety of perspectives. Join us next week on Spectrum Sundays to cultivate a community of appreciation and acceptance around neurodiversity.